Okay. Actually, let's go to this camera since it's right in my face. Good evening. Okay. Let me turn off the volume on my laptop so we don't have that feeding back to us. Ta-da. So let's start with the usual stuff. Uh, tell me how we're doing on the video and the audio. Uh, I tried, I spent a lot of time uh, with Streamlabs and I spent a lot of time um, also with the, the Canon camera setup to improve the quality. And I'm hoping that as I'm speaking, you guys are hearing me, is there any kind of lag? Uh, you know, that sort of thing. Am I out of sync again? Okay. There's a couple of things we can do for that. So if I add Okay. So how about that? Is that any improvement? Is that it? Okay. It's interesting, uh, you know, you do these, uh, well, first of all, I got the Canon here, which is my, you know, that's a $900 camera. And uh, for some reason, and maybe you guys can tell me if this looks any better, uh, I made some changes to it. And uh, I'm wondering if the, uh, the Canon looks like it's uh, high def anymore. It seems like it's a little pixelated. Uh, the way that it works is that uh, what you're doing is you're doing a capture of the window uh, in which the live stream is coming in. Uh, and of course, we don't have that issue with the webcams. The webcams have a direct shot via USB. So uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's the kicker. The the uh, DSLR DSLR is wonderful for recording video, but uh, perhaps for live streaming, uh, it's not the best. So uh, I may have to invest in another uh, uh, 922 Pro, uh, which is what the uh, second camera is. Third one's on the laptop, and the fourth one is a spare one that I have over here. So there we go. Yeah, the, the Canon is kind of awful. It's, it's frustrating because what you have to do is, and I, I even tried a, uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion on, uh, I use Reddit quite a bit. And on Reddit, uh, one of the things that they had uh, uh, suggested was using Sparko Cam, which is a different way of reading the data coming in from the uh, Canon. The only thing I can think of, uh, on top of that is that maybe the USB cord uh, that is going from the Canon uh, to the uh, uh, laptop is not the best. So, so anyway, so what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to use the Logicam. Um, it's on a little mini tripod here, so uh, you know that's that's going to be fine. I can move it around quite a bit, and for the wide shots, we can use the Canon. But uh, you know, it's just one of those things where you invest big money in your little mini YouTube studio, and uh, yeah. But on the other hand, um, if I was using a, a Nikon or a Panasonic or a Sony, um, those cameras would output to, to an HDMI, and I only have one HDMI port on this laptop. So then I'd be required to use the desktop. So anyway, just kind of a big side note as to uh, what's going on. And uh, there is one more thing I wanted to do while I'm thinking of it. Well, I got the Canon right here. Uh, let's go over here. Let me just do a quick copy here. But the biggest thing is, like I said, if the video sync uh, is working properly, even better. Okay, and there we go. So now, there we go. So all the same stuff, and I believe there's a, a chat box uh, on this view as well too. So if somebody types something, it should show up on the bottom of that screen. So, there we go. So what we're doing is, as we go, we're trying to improve the video. We're trying to improve the quality. Hey, Caleb. Hey, D Diecast. Let's see, we got like 14 people in here. Yeah, the icon's working now, so that's cool. Um, yeah, as you can see, I just, uh, I just popped that up on the corner over here. I see the chat box is working down there. Perfect. 
Well, let's start from the beginning. Uh, let me start with, if you are not a regular viewer here, uh, let me say welcome. Uh, my name is Paul, and I'm big into 3D printing, uh, R2D2 building, BB-8 building, store trooper suits, you name it. If it's, if it's nerdy and cool, I'm into it. I got a gazillion projects going on, and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. So if you're not a regular viewer, hit the subscribe button, become one, so you can see cool live streams like this. Uh, if you're already a subscriber and you're a regular, as most of you guys are, welcome back. Fun to have you here again. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of space out. I, I know if I wanted to, I could probably crank up this printer um, <laughs> a lot sooner than the pace I'm going. Uh, what I want to do is I want to basically spend an hour or two each evening. And the reason for that is that I got a lot of good feedback on the previous live stream build that we did. And uh, people appreciated that we broke it down into little sections so that as they built theirs, uh, they could go through my build and, and pick up, you know, any of the things that uh, I taught them. Uh, or I get a lot of feedback from you guys uh, while I'm building uh, that is very beneficial to others. So that's the story there. Uh, so what I have is I have the big... Uh, what we did the other night is we basically went through and we unboxed it. And unboxing videos are the most boring things you can watch on YouTube. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of guys that have ordered this printer. They're three weeks out waiting for theirs to show up. So it's kind of fun to show them what's inside the box and what they're going to be getting. Uh, the other reason we did it is basically we wanted to go through and not only unbox everything, but we went through, we peeled the film off all the pieces, we inventoried the pieces, we inventoried all the bags of stuff that we're supposed to have. And uh, we just basically did all the prep work. Everything's cleaned up, ready to go, uh, so that now, tonight, we can do some building. I'm already spaced out. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> but then again, there's a little bit of a lag. So uh, it looks like, because uh, I have on the 60-inch screen in front of me here, uh, where I'm watching the YouTube feed, um, it is roughly, let's see, if I tap, it's about 22 second delay okay that's cool so <laughs> i brought some of these other miscellaneous pieces up because i was doing a little bit of good research i was reading ahead uh, to find out what the first couple steps are going to be for building the uh you know getting those first couple steps done so i have bags and bags and bags of stuff that we haven't quite opened up yet and what we're going to do we're going to go through the directions and and check it out so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the manual. Dun, dun, dun. All right, exciting stuff right there, right? Okay, so what we're going to do this evening, <laughs> if you turn the pages of your Bible to chapter, we're going to be doing the assembly stuff. Uh, we're going to be using, we're going to do, <laughs> cannot speak tonight. It's going to be a fun night. Uh, we're going to do the Z assembly and the frame assembly. And since this thing is a beast, I'm curious... Uh, how much fun that's going to be by myself without my carpenter square. I lent it out. I don't know where it is. So uh, what we're going to do is these are the two that we're going to do tonight. Okay, and we've already done the guide notes. We've been congratulated. We've gone through. We've done the inventory. We've done all this prep work. We've gone through and made sure we had all of this stuff. And now it's time to get this kit built. And one quick question. I just want to double check here. Dun, dun. Um, are we synced up? Is the I'm, I'm sorry about if there's any kind of lag going on. Um, I just want to make sure that my video, <laughs> my face and my voice are, are synced up. Jake from State Farm. Good evening. Yeah, I don't know why it's laggy. We're, uh, it looks like everything's running pretty well on the, uh, on the system here. So, um, it's not me as they say. <laughs> okay. And I can, uh, definitely close that application out. That might help a little bit, but okay. We're doing better. Okay. Well, this is what happens when you have a low budget, right? <laughs> All right. So. 
Let's get over here. Okay, we know how to do T-nuts. All right. So here we are, the first step. So we're going to mount those pieces to the pieces down below here. Okay, that's cool. Now, the only thing that's a little bit challenging is, uh, and this is not to nitpick on Fogelcheck, the, uh, the only catch with that is it doesn't tell you which bag uh, those parts are in. So we kind of have to play the guessing game here of wondering which bag has those SKF or SHF pieces. Uh, I got a massive heat sink and some other stuff for the power, so that's not in this bag. Uh, the other bags are electronics and stepper motors, so I'm going to look inside the bag that has a zip lock here. And, and that's a PCB, wiring, more stepper motors. Okay, this is all extruder stuff, so all right, and this is our probe, so okay. So, yeah, all right, so this is all the extruder stuff. Well, then the question becomes, where are those guys? Good evening to all. <laughs> uh, punishing myself with more. You know, it's interesting you say that. There, There is no candy with this printer. No candy at all. Okay. So the uh, parts there that attach to the uh, chrome rods, that is what I am currently hunting for. Okay, I got belts. Lots of belts. But I do not see the... BFP, well, the BF. <laughs> so we learned last night, uh, or I, I was contacted by Chris Soros. He's the one that wrote the manual. And uh, he's on the West Coast, so he's a little bummed out that he's missing the start of the live stream. Uh, I, I was impressed that I got a lot of messages from people that saw the live stream or caught the recording, the, you know, the playback. And thanks, guys. I appreciate the feedback. It was all very positive. Uh, it's just that there's a lot of people that are in the central time zone. There's a lot of people on the West Coast, so they kept on asking me to push this later and later and later. Uh, so I figured 8, 8.15 is about the best I can do. So let's look at the chat buff. Da, da, da. No Sour Patch, that's right. No candy, exactly. So we're on the hunt now for these two parts right here. Uh, let's see, in the manual, we're looking for uh, SHF8s. To attach and uh, they weren't in the bag of little hardware that we sorted out the other night. No. Nope. So I am going to bring a more and more bags of stuff up here. Wouldn't that be funny if we're missing that? <laughs> So I guess one of my, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and that's it's probably impossible to do because Chris has no idea how they package these up, but it would be really nice to know which bag has what we're looking for. This has LCD stuff, electronics, stepper mode. Well, I don't think this is going to be in here, so <laughs> this might be a very short video this evening. And... Uh, I'll be pretty upset if we're missing stuff already. All right, that's a styrofoam box that contains a big brick of stepper motors. Yep. Oh, wow. They say fold. Fold your tech on them already. All right. I'm running out of bags to look through, guys. <laughs> No, it's not the UPS guy, actually. Okay, we got stepper drivers and all kinds of stuff. Oh, the same limit switches as the uh, i3. Oh, this is interesting. 
Okay, so this is powered by the MKS 1.4. So that's good. That's what we'll be using in all the fold detectors. Um, well, <laughs> what the hell, guys? Where is it? I'm still looking for... Are you... Uh, you've been missing stuff? All right. Let's see. Good news. Good, good news. In the corner of the box, there's a bag called a mounting. Now, I wonder how I didn't catch that in my inventory. Huh. Bad on me. But that's okay. So, this is the one that has the SHFF8 KFL. All right. So, this is good. So, we're in business after all. So, <laughs> we're not getting out early, kids, tonight. And uh, I can tell you that, <laughs> I should show you guys this. The, uh, the felines are having an absolute field day with that box and packing. So, <laughs> so I'm not gonna blame the cats, that's too easy. You guys would expect that. All right, let's get this tip down a little bit here. And actually, let me tip it down. Okay. So these look like the guys we're looking for. One, two, three, four. All right, it looks like we got a couple extras here as well for elsewhere. Okay, get some pretty good sized lead screws. <laughs> Jason with the cat icon. Very good. All right, and then we get uh, these guys. So I'm not going to put this bag too far away. Well, let's get this pan back up a little bit. And all right, let's try to get this on the very corner. Now that uh, we have located these pieces, let's uh, relocate some stuff. Just so we don't damage anything. Okay. So we don't need the razor blade any longer. So looking at the directions, if I click the mouse, you guys can see what I'm looking at. So right here, so we have four of these parts. Yeah, we got four of them. Okay, I got the uh, tub there that has all the screws. So we're going to be using 8M4 by 20 millimeter. So let's grab our tote and do that. Okay, and M4 by 20 millimeter. Okay. Eight of them. This is where this big giant tub comes in handy. There's three. Where's my pizza plate? I don't want these guys rolling around too far. If you guys are interested in getting one of these printers, as we mentioned uh, uh, not too long ago, there is a discount code in the description of this video. Saves you a little bit of money if you place your order. So just a little FYI if you guys are looking to save some money. Uh, also, uh, on the bottom of your chat buffer right there, there's a dollar sign by the chat box. If you want to donate, tip me, gas money, whatever you want to call it, coffee money, beer money is actually my favorite. Uh, feel free to <laughs> chip in and donate if you like what you're seeing. I appreciate it. All right. Now, what do we got? So, these plates look very different. So, what we want to do, I like money too, exactly right. All right, so I got these guys all stacked up over here, and we're going to play a little matching game to make sure we get. Oh 
my goodness gracious, these are heavy. Get the right stuff. Okay, make sure you have this hole towards you. That seems like a reasonable request. Okay, and this is, uh, let's see, dash, dash, dash. Yeah, very good. And then the other one, will be just the opposite. Got it. So let's go back over here so you can see all the chaos I'm doing. Yeah, I'm going to stick you back on the cannon here for a minute so you have a better view. And uh, what money can you find? And uh, we got these guys. Actually, let's go back to our HD view here. And I'm going to try to stand this up and, and tip it down a little bit here. Because I want you guys to see what we're working on. So looking at the video and the capture of the screen I got. I was expecting Keith to be here. Keith is usually my moderator guy, but he must have, he's on the West Coast, so he must have got busy with something. And and let's see. Take the glasses off again so I can see in the distance. So it's interesting how these guys are going to, uh, the bolts go on, maybe they go in rather, from the bottom and the nut on top. Uh, okay, the only question I have about doing that is, um, I kind of want to have a washer there. You know, uh, but I have washers. I know it's not a uh, part of the hardware pack that they include, but just any time, because what my thought is, um, you know, the screw is just going to go right up against this. And uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a better shot here. Yeah, so the screw is going to go right up against this. And uh, I just think it'd be a good idea to have a, a washer in there. You know, if you tighten this up, it's going to crunch into the uh, ACM. So, and I'm pretty sure i got a couple washers here that may be the right size. I don't know. And let's see, the hole was towards me. The other thing I'm wondering, let's see if it's, let me look at their picture here. Because I'm wondering, uh, let me... Uh, Zoom that in. Which way is the set screw? Okay. I am not seeing in that graphic, you know, which way that set screw is. I'm assuming we want the set screw from the outside. Should we have to tighten that up? I'm sorry, maybe set screw is not what I'm looking for. If we have to tighten this up in the future, I am assuming we want to make sure that, let me get back to the proper view here. I am assuming we want to make sure that we have that guy on the outside. And... I'm just going to finger type this guy. Let's do the next one. That hole on the left panel. Yep, I got the right hole. Yep. I wish I had more washers. I think I do have a, another container of them. Uh, let's see, a wrench would be handy right now. You know, I bought this big expensive metric kit and I never have the size I'm looking for. So I suppose that will have to suffice. You know what's interesting? JDC. Yeah, okay, good. Yep. Double checking what you just typed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have, I think, 
let's see which size you are. You are this one. You know what's amazing? Uh, all the printers I've bought lately, this is the, the, the Fulvertex are the only ones that, are, that don't include the Allen wrench. <laughs> With all the g -Tech stuff that I've bought, oi, oi, oi. I'm probably going to regret going too tight on these, so I'm not going to reef on them. Okay. Come on, Craftsman. Play nice for me. Well, with the addition of the uh, the washer, here we go. So here's the end result. Now that I have the uh, the washers on there, so there is one. And then, like I said, just to point out, uh, I've made sure that the uh, the side where you can tighten this up is uh, is on the outside edge. So that someday, if we actually want to take the sucker apart, <laughs> uh, we have access to do so. And let me look through the chat buffer, see what's going on. You guys are being quiet. They are quietly mocking me. And more launchers, please. Well, I've only got like four left, so. So it's going to take up pretty much all of my inventory. No candy, no Allen wrenches. I know, this is an outrage, isn't it? Mr. Folgers, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, I'm hoping the HD is working out all right. You know, I got a Papa John's paper plate sitting here. Our unofficial sponsor. sure that this guy's on the outside as well. You know what I could do is I could grab a socket and that would probably be better, but all right. Okay, so we have made sure that the uh, okay, that the adjustments are on that side, straight out, no obstructions. Uh, I added them myself. Yeah, I happen to have a whole bunch. The uh, just looking at his. Uh, yeah, no special instructions here. Okay, so this one is done. Uh, if you're curious, um, these look to be, I'm using number 10 flat washers. Uh, you know, this is one of those things, maybe I'm kind of a overly organized, but with all the stuff I've done with my robots and such, I just always keep a whole bunch of these guys handy. Uh, I got a ton of lock washers. I suppose I could use those. I mean, I just, I don't want that screw head to be on top of, you know, pressing on the ACM too hard. Pop these guys open. I mean, they're not terribly expensive. It's definitely one of those things I'd probably, uh, someone add that to my checklist of things I offer to Fulgotech as a, a suggestion. Okay, same story with these guys. Um, okay, I got those guys in there correctly. I was going to start on this last night, but I didn't get home until fairly late. And as Caleb will probably rat me out, <laughs> I came home, had dinner, and jumped in the flight simulator. So I, uh, I was streaming some of my uh, flight uh, with the VR uh, Oculus Rift headset, 
on Facebook. I wanted to see how well the new setup was going to work. And it did an okay job. Can't say much for the flying part of it, but I was flying a A4 Skyhawk and practicing landings on the aircraft carrier. There weren't too many explosions. Did a little better than usual. Okay, and adding another washer here. As you can see in the background, if you guys are get really good eyes, you can see BB-8 is sitting there. Poor Bieber is waiting for me to 3D print all the body panels he needs, so he's kind of sitting there naked. So if your children are walking by, you may need to cover their eyes. <laughs> and I'm just thinking of something, but... Size are you guys just for reference? Hmm. Not too big. So I guess eight point five. No. Hmm. I'm just curious to see yeah, so if I wanted to actually use that I could Good to have tools. Even better if you can organize them. <laughs> okay. I know I recently had a sighting of that particular small socket wrench, but I guess I won't go back. this I do like this uh, white ATM I think that's a nice touch and I'm just double checking to make sure that this goes in centered up what's interesting is they're going in a slot they're not going in specific holes so that gives you a little bit of wiggle room, I guess. That's why I'm not going uh, too tight on these. Okay. I keep checking the chat buffer. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. If you're not a regular here, say hello. Where are you from? And... Liven up that buffer a little bit. If you're wondering where the devil I am, I am way up here in Maine. Definitely makes a big difference if you can bring this to the edge of a table. <laughs> I've been trying to do it so it's in camera shot, but it's much faster if I do it this way. Michigan. I guess... Uh, I'm one of those people where if I miss the news for a couple days, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> but uh, I've just been uh, following all these floods they've been having. Like, holy cow, that's, uh, that's quite something. So I hope if anyone is in that part of the world, you're, you're safe. Okay, that one's in. Okay, 
so let's uh oops let's go this way let me go to the wide view so you can see that we have uh, completed step one of the instructions and again paying special attention to two things um the uh allen head screw where you, you tighten the uh, chrome rods of this are, are on the outsides uh, you definitely don't want to have them on the inside because that will really make a pain in the ass if you need to change those at a future date. How far from Boston? I am, let's see, I would have to say I'm about 150 miles north of Boston. New Jersey. You know what? I, You know what I'm going to say? What exit? <laughs> a friend was from New Jersey. Whenever he was talking to other people from New Jersey, they always said, hey, what exit? So... No insult intended, but I just thought that was funny. Uh, let's look at the instructions and let's kick off to the next page. Okay, kind of knew this was coming. That's why I put these parts back the way I found them. So what we're gonna do is we have to uh, flip these guys over. And on the very bottom, let me draw your attention to uh, this guy here, uh, if I can find my mouse. So the bottom piece, we flip over and make sure that's on the bottom. And the other one, similar story. Okay, so we're gonna have to go through my bag of parts one more time. And one. Goodness gracious. It must be at the bottom. It's at the bottom. Okay. So these fellas are going to go here, and they're going to be the same story. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, aim up a little bit here so you can actually see me. Uh, okay, so from the instructions, so we have these two. These are the KFL8s. And, uh, okay, and then we need uh, M4 by 16. And again, uh, M4 by 16. You know, it was interesting you say that, Jason, because I remember from the FT5, it was a terrible, terrible time um, getting stuff to fit inside these things. This looks pretty clean, though. Now, that background noise is my furnace kicking on. If you can't hear it, that's outstanding. Um, I really, really, really want to have washers on that. Okay, when you've been building robots as long as I have, you you collect everything. So this is my uh, everything 1024 collection, because most of R2's body is 1024. And sometimes I stick the extras in here, but I'm not seeing any in this one. This is the quarter 20. Let me just see what I got. No. Lock washers, but geez, I guess if I'm torn between nothing and a lock washer, maybe I'll use a lock washer. I 
I just don't want to damage that ACM material with the pan head screw. Uh, you're asking about what's behind me? Uh, that is a Ultimaker 2 Plus. As a matter of fact, uh, let me uh, pull my extension cable up here a little bit more. Um, there she is. And actually, what I had printed was this is the FT6 belt tensioner. Uh, a couple people had uh, mentioned on the uh, forums. So uh, I thought I would print one of those just in case I decided to use one. Um, the first one that I printed, I forgot, and uh, it came out quite well, but uh, I had turned on uh, full supports, so I have some uh, junk up there up top. I don't know if that was going to wind up being in the way or not. So, but yeah, even the holes have uh, support. And I mean, I could dig that out, but I thought, well, let me just do a reprint. I didn't add a, a separation layer in the G code. I always have one on the bottom of the support. I didn't have it on the top of the support. So uh, with any luck, that will make life easy. Okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, for those of you that are uh, watching this as a replay, I am going to, because I am out of flat washers, I'm going to use number 10 lock washers. Uh, and uh, we're just going to do that and, and just, I would prefer a flat, a flat washer just to kind of make sure we're not doing any damage to the uh, part, but what can you do? And let's see, did I grab a handful of uh, nylon insert nuts? Probably not. Uh, let's see, directions say four, so we'll get four. Quite surprised that the feline army that I have here at the house is uh, is being quiet. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off the edge of the table so I can get under it easier. Um, kind of surprised that this doesn't have uh, holes, you know, versus the uh, that elongated opening that it currently has. Uh, let's see, the Allen wrench would be good to have right on hand for this. socket because it's hard to reach some of these things with the needle nose. That's one of those things I'd really like to ask is why they went with these slot openings versus the holes. close up here. So, actually I'll bring the camera right up there. So what we've done is we have these uh, in there. You can see, let me move the camera a little bit aside. Eventually we get some focus here. Maybe, maybe, there you go. So there you can see the uh, split washers. 
So, you know, just a little bit of a buffer between the screw head and the ACM. I, uh, I definitely prefer the way that the other ones, you know, the bearing holder or the rod holders, I, uh, I like how those look. Okay, that one is done. Let's move that right here. The next one's right here. What's nice is having this huge TV right in front of me, so there's no way I can miss the directions. Of course, I <laughs> I need my glasses to see this screen, but I obviously I do not need them for the 60 inch. All right. All right. So KFL is going in. I say all right a lot. I was teasing my father because he always uses as a preface to stuff as just out of curiosity. And I was like, oh my god, Dad, you, you really need a new soliloquy or something that. <laughs> but it was pointed out to me that I say all right all the time, so. ASMR. What does ASMR stand for? For those of us not savvy with material science. Okay, that guy's in. I want a flat washer in here. This might be one of those things that after work tomorrow I go pick some up. Um, I just had a thought, but I just want to make sure. <laughs> oh, son of a biscuit. Okay, so who's going to be the astute reader that uh, sees the error of my ways? Yeah, the bolts go on the top, so i got to undo everything I did and change them. <laughs> oh, son of a gun. Well, this is a perfect opportunity for me to grab a socket. stream you guys can keep me honest but we were all asleep at the wheel time is it there let's see over here it is 9 5 p.m.
and I looked at the pictures but I didn't read the text and that's why I have to redo this. Oh, really? Twelve oh five p.m. Wow, where are you guys? Holy cow! I have quite the worldwide audience. All right, let's make sure I do this right this time. So let's see. Make sure the center of the KFL school in the socket. Now he's talking about things that they swivel in the socket. Let me let's take a look at this real quick. You're in the UK. Wow, Australia, outstanding. Okay, so he is saying flip the fingers over, mount the two KFLs. The bolts go on top. Make sure the center of the KFL swivel in the socket. Okay, so that just means that you want to make sure that the part is moving around. Okay, because my my worry was that these were supposed to go in with uh, the top piece down. So that's a relief. Where in Australia? I, uh, I haven't been to Australia in many years and I went once and I absolutely loved it. Okay, bolts go on the top, got it. I went to uh, Ballarat, and, well, I landed in, in Melbourne, but I uh, went to Ballarat, the old gold mining town. You know what, I'm going to put the uh, lock washer on the bottom half this time. All right, so right now I just have this thing at the ledge, and I am putting the lock washer on the bottom of the screw. This way the nut is not crushing the ACM. I'm on the Kangs went out back. Wow, north oh north south Wales. Yeah. I wanted to get out that way. I went to a uh, they took me to a uh, I thought it was a zoo. <laughs> But it was a uh, preserve of some type. I, I, I guess the way they do zoos over there are very different than what we do here in the States. But uh, <laughs> I went in, uh, got there first thing in the morning. I pretty much had the place all to myself, as the guy said. He handed me several bags of bread and said, feed them. So I walked into the area, and it was a very open area. <laughs> and I'm expecting some sort of confined animals. And nope, they were just bouncing around everywhere they wanted to be. And once they saw me with the bread, I expected maybe a dozen, but I think I had about 30 <laughs> all over me. And uh, if you've never been to Australia, if you've never seen a kangaroo, uh, it's like a giant rabbit. <laughs> uh, they weren't, they were very friendly. Okay, so. Just want to, so if it's done correctly, there it is. Screws in the top, and at the bottom, what I've done is, and you may be able to see it here, let me, if I lift this up here above my watermark, uh, there is the uh, nylon insert nuts, and uh, you may be able to see if I get this guy close enough without whacking the camera. Uh, I do have the lock washers under there. There you go, focus. So, again, my thought is I'm just trying to protect the ACM. Uh, I, I just don't want to have the screw head or the nuts uh, punch a hole in this. Not that I think it can, but, you know, my FT5 is a grand adventure, so, so I have to uh, correct my boo-boos on this one as well. Oh, hi, Emma. Yeah, isn't that material quite something? That has been, uh, uh, I have had purple, I've had uh, all kinds of colors of that stuff. And I did a pile of test prints, and you know, with all these printers, I get quite a collection of test prints sitting everywhere. 
So what I've been doing is I, uh, I bring them to work and I work at a university. So a fair amount of traffic walks by and I've been giving away, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. test prints like crazy. And the ones that had the uh, uh, purple rain uh, polyalchemy stuff, uh, that stuff went quick. The one thing that surprised me is uh, I was reading someone else's review of it and they were saying it wasn't as strong as some other PLAs. Uh, which which kind of surprised me because I found the stuff that I printed was rather rather strong, but it's PLA. Oh, I wish I could find the right metric socket for this rather than have this sharp ACM jamming me in the face. camera for a second all right it's uh yes i know last time i started to take a sweatshirt off that's when the money rolled in that was funny all right so i'm getting toasty and, uh, no no i don't teach oh god i couldn't i couldn't no Yeah, I, I think uh, as far as the strength of that material, I think a lot of it, uh, I just got to see where I'm at here. Let's see. So I got to go here. Like this. Um, I'm in IT. No, I, uh, I oversee the online learning system. Uh, in this case, uh, it's called Blackboard. And did I lose the lock washer? I have the lock washer, okay. Okay, I got oh that's why. Yeah, so I'm in IT. Uh yeah, the polyalchemy stuff, like I said, that's still some of my favorite. It just it looks like you know, even at uh, you know, 0 0.2 millimeter uh, resolution. You don't see those layer lines in it. That's just really, really cool. All right, let's get you off to the edge of my desk. What are you doing, Theodore? See, this is the fun that goes on in my house. Uh, let's see. That is uh, Theodore is completely buried in uh, the packing. So if you hear crunching in the background, and uh, there is uh, minion number two who has been steering me down the whole time so that is your studio audience this evening yeah online classes are uh, kind of where it's at <laughs> my only grudge is that uh, sometimes if you're a remote student and you're taking a class where there are students in the classroom um, things like midterms are a little bit different. Um, they get a proctored exam, meaning you know, the teacher's there to make sure no one's cheating, uh, while you get stuck with an essay exam. That's what happened to me in my aviation history course just last week. You know, they got a uh, 50 multiple choice questions and I had to do a seven page essay question. <laughs> like, wait a minute, how is that fair? But that's the thing with, uh, I mean, it's just all so new to me. I mean, going back to school, I am definitely not a 20 or 30 something. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't fight me. Here it is. Now, swing you this way. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the essay question. I mean, I like to write and what have you, but it's the graded part. <laughs> I'm not so crazy about. quite different when you 
one of the classes I did is uh, I never had physics in high school. And uh, a lot of people find that amazing, especially since I've had my, I've been a private pilot, I've had my private pilot license for uh, going on 27 years now. I mean, when you're going through flight school, you learn the basics of it and, you know, what, what relates to aviation, you know, gyroscopic, you know, deviation and, and stuff like that. Here we go. Okay, so this one is in. I think it budges around a little bit. Yeah. All right. I know. I said all right again. <laughs> Get this giant bag right in front of the camera. I apologize for that. Look, my little my little donation jar is still looking so lonely, guys. <laughs> so okay. Uh, now we have these pieces done. Okay. Let's make sure I got what on what here. Okay, this I'm looking at the pictures here just to kind of match everything up. And let's look at the photo one more time. Yes. Oh, Emma. Boy, oh boy. I, I really wish um, Keith would join in. Uh, Keith was very excited to get a Fusa Mark III S kit. And he's a very smart guy. He's been helping me out with my firmware. And he's a really good CAD guy, too. Um, he's had a terrible time with them. Um, the one that he got, uh, the, the rods were bent. Um, definitely check your stuff. I, I'm not trying to uh, scare you away from your purchase, uh, but he talked to support about getting parts replaced, and he's, it has not been the most fun for him. He's, he's definitely had some comments about the lack of quality. Um, the impression that he left me with was that uh, it seems like they're hurrying to get all these massive orders out, and sometimes it looks like quality is taking a, a back seat. So, but hopefully Keith will jump in here at some point. Uh, I would love to have one. I mean, I see Mike just chimed in about the, he has three of them. Yeah, I mean, I I am like you guys. I see the videos, I see on YouTube, and I the, he's really done a good job innovating. Uh, I mean, he's really kind of helped lead the charge on a lot of the uh, things that we have now, spring steel, multi-filament you know, multi, uh, uh, stuff. Uh, I, mean, he's, I got tape stuck on one of these parts, and it's giving me OCD. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I would love to have one, but you know how it is. <laughs> There's never that spare $1,000 or a $7.99 or whatever, and that's why I'm building a kit. Uh, do I need uh, physics to get my commercial license? No, actually. Uh, no, the, uh, there is no school requirements for aviation. It's all in dealing with your ground schools. So obviously, if you have that educational background, when you take the written test, uh, it's going to make a world of difference for you. Okay. Uh, at some point, these got mixed up, it looks like. There we are. Okay. There's these guys. There's another one. Okay, those are my diamonds. Okay, got it. So, uh, so we have three poots marker. You love them, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I I would love to have one. Um, I'm, I'm sure I could find a spot for it here uh, somewhere in the shop. Uh, to me, they really give a. a a good run for quality with the Ultimaker. Uh, the Ultimakers, that was my first printer, an Ultimaker original, uh, one of the kits. And uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a really good time putting that together. Uh, it wasn't an inexpensive kit, but it was also 2013, so you were dealing with a whole lot of, of different things. It was made out of uh, birch, Baltic birch. And when that printer ran um, between the stepper motors, the belts, and what have you, uh, you ever watch those ghost shows where they have the little digital recorders and they're recording like, you know, EVPs and such? It was like putting a 3D printer inside a guitar. I mean, just the whole harmonics and the things. You'd be upstairs and you would, you would really think there was a conversation going on downstairs. You couldn't make it out, but you could hear something going on. That was that printer screeching away. So, there you go. Jason Foreman, hello. 
Well, I'm just going to uh, show you exactly where we are at here. We're like a, like an hour into this. Okay, so uh, we have just completed step number two. Hey, Robbie. We've got some peoples here tonight. So we're, we're kind of going slow. So we have just finished step two. We've got the, uh, we had to hunt around a little bit for the hardware bag, but uh, it was down there in the very corner under all the packing. Um, don't know if it was packed that way, but hey, we were able to locate it. So this step has been completed. The only thing I did different, and again, if you're just joining in and you're not aware of this, the only thing I did different here is I added flat washers. And when I ran out of flat washers, I used uh, lock washers because I just didn't want to have the pan head screw uh, coming into direct contact with the corner of the ACM. Because uh, you can tighten it up, you know, you don't want to hear that crunching sound that you're going into the material. So that's why I added that. Those, that stuff is not included in the kit. And let me just look at the tag here again real quick. Uh, if you are looking to do what I did, it's a, a number 10 flat washer. And uh, you can find that at Lowe's or what have you. So let's kick over to the next step. And now that we got these two pieces done. Okay, now we have to do the Z assembly. Well, we're getting into the fun stuff now. Let's see. So I need to go back to this bag of stuff here. And, oops, sorry if the camera's a little fuzzy there for a second. <laughs> oh, Robbie, this is a Folger Tech FT6. And... I'm sorry, and uh, I meant to add, let's see, I should probably place a link for that. And just so you're aware, uh, in the uh, description here of my video, if you are interested in getting one of these printers, uh, you will notice in the description that I have a discount code, actually for anything at Folger Tech. Don't know how much it gives you off, but um, there it is. Let's go over here so I can share my screen with you. So this is what we are building right here. And uh, it is a beast. Let me do a little pop up here. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's all done. The print area for this printer is 720 by 350 by 400. Uh, breaks down into something like 23 inches by uh, 10 point something by 12 point something. If my conversion off the top of my head is correct. <laughs> oh, here we go. The coffee jokes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these guys are one state away from me. Uh, uh, Folger uh, is in New Hampshire. And yeah, it has dual extruder. Now, the one that we have uh, does not have the 7 inch screen built into it. Uh, it's going to be similar to our FT5. Uh, the FT5 is another printer uh, that they sell. Uh, I don't know if you've seen mine in the past, but uh, uh, the FT5 is right over here. Gives you an idea. So that's a 300 by 300 by 400, which is 12 by 12 by 15.75. And I have one of those as well. As a matter of fact, I have some upgrades to install on that one. But uh, that is what we're putting together. This guy is going to be a monster. It's going to be huge. And as a matter of fact, uh, what I can do, sorry, my Canon camera isn't as good as the others, but to give you an idea of how big this thing is, uh, that's the heated bed. This, this is what we're printing on. <laughs> so, definitely a big guy. All right, now I need to grab the right part and piece here. Let's see, let me uh, get my mouse. Moving back on the 60 inch screen. Okay, we need BFP08. And he doesn't show the pieces there, so I have to kind of find them here. Not that. Okay, and then it looks like this one. Looking at the picture, yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I wish uh, that's another thing I'll, I'll mention. He'll probably hear this in the playback. 
Uh, it'd be kind of cool on the assembly when it shows what materials we're going to be using. Uh, it'd be cool if it includes the ACM materials too. Just a suggestion because <laughs> they look all alike after a while. Okay, we're dealing with a huge amount of stuff here, so I'm going to relocate these. I mean, this is the bottom of the printer, guys. <laughs> it's like, holy cow. Let's move this. Let's move this. And again, this is my Canon T7i. For whatever reason, it doesn't do live streams very well because of the way the Canon software captures. So apologies for that. Uh, this material is ACM. It's a aluminum composite material. Uh, essentially, it is uh, uh, aluminum uh, with uh, plastic sandwiched in between. It's a very popular material for sign making and 3D printers. <laughs> um, the nice thing is it's, it's, it's pretty flat stuff. And uh, the i3 Mega that we put together not too long ago uh, was our first exposure to this stuff and uh, I like it. All right, let's uh, get this stuff unloaded. Are you working in sign making? Yeah, and the uh, link to the printer, let's see. If I, uh, apologies for that. Let's go ahead and do a little cut and paste here. And uh, I think that went across. That should have shown up on the feed. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it just it truncated here a little bit. Yeah, in sign making, yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> now nah, there's no such thing as stupid questions. Far away. I don't mind one bit. That's why it's a live stream, and that's why we're doing this. We're learning together. Okay, let's start with. Uh, I know I'm going to need. Four of these, which I have. Let's go ahead and get these guys unpackaged. But uh, yeah, a friend of mine, he's also a sign maker. He does uh, a lot of uh, vinyl stuff, but he also has CNC machines for wood signs. And uh, uh, he does use this ACM stuff. And uh, I can't remember the brand name, but uh, when I mentioned it to him, he was he was pretty familiar with it. Because it's uh, very stiff, very flat, and very lightweight. Okay, I got all kinds of leftover. Because of the plastic in here, I mean, it's, there are some sharp edges here. I mean, we're dealing with, you know, CNC cut aluminum uh, plus the plastic. So you do get a little bit of that. Uh, let's see. So I need to get two 22 5 millimeter pulleys. That's going to be in one of these bags here with all the pulleys. Yep. Hey, I'm glad you chimed in there. Yep, you, you definitely know your stuff. <laughs> okay, I got uh, tons of these. And I need two 5mm guys. Boy. Well, let's just be sure. Four point nine nine and five point zero zero one. I'd say those are the ones. <laughs> okay, got two of you. Okay, I got those four. I need a bunch of nine locks. Look at all the belts we're gonna get to play with. Wow, there's actually you know what? I'm gonna reuse this bag of the belts because 
There we go. It's a lot of work to stuff all those back in there. Boy, look at some of the, I mean, we're, <laughs> belting this thing up is going to be quite a project. Okay, got a bunch of idlers. Okay, let's get you out of the way. And then we still need another, like I said, as I mentioned earlier, these uh, totes are inexpensive. You can get these for about 15 bucks. You love the hardware store. And uh, highly recommended because, uh, as you may or may not have seen in the first video, the uh, big process with this kit is inventorying all the parts and getting everything you need set up. Okay, I need uh, four M3 by 10 millimeter. Okay, so that's gonna be these. Um, M4. Did I read that right? No, M3 by 10 millimeters would be said, okay. Four of them. One, two, three, four. Let's put you here. And then we need eight M4 by 20. Yeah, yeah, cleanup is always the worst part of all these kits. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What I'm noticing is that he gives you about one extra screw. Uh, and then I need eight M4 nylons, which makes sense with eight nuts. Okay, two, four, six. Yeah, okay, so there is my hardware. All right, let's move this off screen and okay, let's get this set up just like he shows in the uh, instructions. Okay, so I want to make sure that I have these guys like that. And these guys like that and again we want to make sure that uh, these guys j just in general I would make sure that um, the socket side you know where you can tighten it all up I'd make sure that's facing the outside over here and then over here so that's gonna be the next step let me go back to this other camera view here and let me pull the camera back and down a little so you can see the fun I'm having. Now the whole thing with the stepper motors. I'm not even going to read that right yet. <laughs> nope. Uh, again, I, I, I wish I had more of the flat washers. Okay, I want to make sure that this is going on the outside. Uh, let's see. Mount the 4KF4s using the info hardware. Mount a pull it upside down to... All the bolts go on the bottom. Okay, he's need, we need to clean up that English a little bit. All of the bolts go on the bottom. So I'm assuming, we're looking at the graphic here, so I think what he means to say is the bolts should come in from the bottom. Just a little. Oh, another Sierra 10? What do I have left for, uh... All right, I'm gonna use, uh... I'm gonna put a handful of those lock washers in there just so I have something. Okay, so he's saying, okay, so all the bolts go on the bottom, so... Chris, when you watch this, just so you know, when you read this out loud, um, I know what you're trying to say, but I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to say. <laughs> so, whoa, T H A N K S. No, John, the I three. We put that on pause <laughs> when the F when the F T six arrived. Everybody, everybody was like, "Get that thing built! I want to see it." So uh, we 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 halted. <laughs> in our tracks um, put it on the other desk uh, as a matter of fact I mean it's sitting there it, it looks sad uh, I can't wait to do some more work to it oops I just dropped 
So as soon as we get this guy done, we're going to regroup because we did figure out uh, what we need to do on the uh, i3 Mega. We need to move the limit switch to the outside of the frame. That will give us back the space we're missing. Okay, I just want to make sure that it's good. And let's get another. Again, we're just using lock washers to Well, actually, you know, it's interesting you say that. Just about previously they had used melamine, okay? And you know how warpy that material can get cuz it's like pressure board. And uh so this ACM is a uh, the last printer we have from them is the i3 Mega and the ACM they use is black and it came out really nice. I mean, it's a sharp looking printer, but very rarely do you see a white printer. So uh, I'm kind of fond of this white ACM material, to be honest with you. Uh, one of the guys, uh, he had some uh, wrap material and he put the fake carbon fiber uh, stuff on his. And uh, I wish I had that. that. That's a cool look. Okay, making sure I have that out of the way. And what I'm doing, they're not going, I'm just putting these in finger tight just so I can hang them in here and then tighten them up. I really should find the right socket size to make tightening these up a bit easier. Custom graphics for your printer. Hey, I think, my friend, you would have a market if you did that. <laughs> We've had a couple of guys. Uh, remember, this uh, this printer kit is not open source, okay? It's not like you can say, hey, uh, you know, I would like to redo the ACM parts and, uh, you know, MD5 or some super flat aluminum. Could you share that with me? And they won't reply because <laughs> uh, this is not an open source kit. There. So there's been a lot of guys that have kind of reverse engineered these. Sorry, I keep looking at my laptop and I should be looking at the camera. Uh, so they've re uh, reverse engineered and uh, made their own, you know, high quality aluminum pieces. And of course, with the pricing of aluminum right now, uh, it gets expensive fast. Okay, I want my needle nose. I want my MTV. Sorry, I'm showing my age, aren't I? Well, that's just a thing. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of guys that uh, 713 Maker makes a lot of parts of the uh, FT5, and uh, he got buried. He got a lot of requests. And I'm not sure what the gist is on that, but uh, a lot of the parts I wanted were back ordered for a long time, like over a year. And I don't know if it's just a money loser or what, or I, I don't know. I'm a little capitalist. I would, if I had 100 people that wanted something I made, <laughs> I'd be all over that. But who knows? Okay. okay. And let me move that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the E3D stuff. I. Uh, my friends tease me because this what every printer I buy, I upgrade with a bunch of E3D stuff. Oops. Theodore, what are you doing? I got a, a cat named Theodore. He just turned a year old, and he's currently attacking the bubble wrap, the giant-sized bubble. He doesn't know what to make of it. So if you hear a little chirping or whatever, that's him trying to sort it out. He's a handsome cat. He's just not the brightest guy. He just figured out the other day that uh, cat treats are yummy if you eat them instead of think they're toys and fling them under the refrigerator. Ooh, I wonder how much that's going to weigh. That's interesting, Jason. I went with uh, the uh, spring steel option uh, that Brant was uh, getting a group order going on. Being a state employee, I get paid once a month, so I told him, I said, I want one, but I can't pay you until the end of the month. <laughs> it sucks to be poor. Okay, so what I want to do, let's see. I'm looking at the graphic, and it looks like I've done this correctly. 
Okay, lang flat. So this is this. These openings are facing here, and I have these outside, and the nuts are on top. Yay. Not bad for a Frenchman, huh? And I'm French, I can say that. Don't get offended now. True. Well, and that's just it. His, if you're, if you enjoy building kits, uh, that's just it. Some people can't do this. And I'll be honest, my first one was a real struggle, my, the, the Ultimaker. But it had really good instructions. Um, my FT5, that wiring is just, that's the, that's the worst part is the wiring. <laughs> okay, so again, we want to make sure that these screws are going in from the bottom. Again, I'm putting the uh, lock washers on the bottom. But, uh, I mean, you have to look at it uh, a couple ways. I mean, if you want to buy a brand new CR-10S or something like that, you know, you're talking about five or $600, depending on which vendor and gear best or whatever which I wouldn't recommend, but anyway. <laughs> I would buy it from Tiny Machines or Printed Solid because those guys have taken the time to inspect them and make sure that they weren't beat to hell. And Actually, the one I got from Printed Solid, they replaced the problematic thermosistor. A lot of people had that issue with the CR-10S. They took care of that. And tiny machines is the same story. So at least you're getting something that you know someone's looked over. My first CR10 came from Gearbest, and it oops, I forgot, I forgot the lock washer. It was beat to hell. <laughs> Took a little work to make that thing work properly. And the only thing I've ever bought from AliExpress was the uh, the G Tech, and that thing was a pile of crap when it came in. And that thing has been a support nightmare. We've only had to take it apart completely and replace all the key parts to turn it into the really good printer that it's turned into. But uh, getting to your point about the whole kit thing, um, oh, I didn't give myself enough pieces. Hey, 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 hey. Molly, he'll play with you, but if you're sitting on his head, he's going to get upset. Uh, there's, I can't think of a printer this size that you can get for less than a thousand dollars. I'm sorry, that's the, the gist of the statement I wanted to say. You know, a lot of the CR10s, TiVo tornadoes, what have you. The foundation is generally okay. Why am I, why am I missing something on this one? Oh, you know what? The uh, lock washer fell out and it's sitting right in front of it. Because I have a, I got a TiVo Tornado, I got a CR10, CR10S, and uh, it's taken a lot of money to get those guys to perform reliably. The stock stuff will work for a little while, but eventually the the cheapness will catch up with you. <laughs> Yeah, the FT6, I have high hopes for. Uh, I had the same issues with my, the high hopes with my FT5, but the warp melamine, uh, the bed was a mess. Um, so, but we have aluminum pieces now to replace with that, and I'm hoping that will turn into my tank printer. Uh, this FT6, like I said, with all the BV8 parts that I need to print, uh, rather than queuing up two or three printers, I can queue them all up on one printer. <laughs> I'm hopeful. Okay, let's tighten you. Okay. And again, if you're watching me and going, why don't you have a socket for that? I know, I know, I know. The only thing I'm really looking forward to changing on this thing, and, and again, I'm one of those people as I put a kit together, I'm looking at stuff going, well, that's an interesting design decision, but I'm gonna, but I might have done it a different way. 
Yeah, I don't know anything about these multi materials that use the Y adapters. Um, the only multi material printers I've had have been the uh, uh, the Ultimaker three, and then forty three hundred dollars, they they have quite the setup that does it. There we go. Okay, so let me match up the picture here. Okay. A little bit of debris still stuck in here. I should have taken the shot back to this. So I'm curious how the, the two into one extruder experience is going to work. I've seen a lot of people that have A10Ms, you know, the Chinese. And, you know, they do okay, but I, I, I'm really curious about the marbling effect, what happens when, you know, you withdraw one material, you put the other material in there, you do a purge tower, and how good it does at preventing that color from leaking in. But we'll see. It's all brand new to me. Uh, let me look at my chat buffer, make sure I have not missed out on anybody. We're an hour and 38 minutes into this already. Wow. So let me do my usual top of the hour stuff saying uh, if you've just tuned in and you wonder what the heck are you watching, uh, this is a Fulgertech FT6. It is a ginormously huge 3D printer kit, and we are uh, putting it together. Uh, my name is Paul, and uh, this is my channel where nerdy is cool. If you're not already a subscriber, there's a button right down there in the corner. You can hit to, to become one. This way you're notified of when I do cool live stream builds like this, uh, plus my other videos. I have a lot of Octoprint videos and other stuff there that uh, you might be interested in. Um, I like doing tutorials. I like helping people out. So... Uh, that's why we're doing this. I am hopeful that uh, I'm going to break the assembly into a couple videos over the next couple days. Uh, this way, if anyone else gets their FT6 and they want to watch my videos and learn from my mistakes or <laughs> my successes, let's be optimistic, uh, they'll have that as a resource. So there, that's uh, my little blurb. How are you? I'm going to grab a drink of water. <laughs> okay. So now... Probably don't want to put water next to my laptop. Yeah, let's not dump water on the $2,000 laptop. <laughs> so now we need... Um, see, uh, here's another thing here, okay? On the Z assembly, on the instructions on the very top, I'm, I'm not picking on them. I'm offering constructive criticism, but uh, it certainly should mention across the top there. It mentions the hardware, but it would, it would be good to mention, you know, which panels are we using, you know, the BFP 8 and 9, uh, and then, of course, you know, a quantity two stepper motors. So if that wa information was there, that would be very helpful. So uh, I need to find the stepper motors. And that's going to be the big, heavy box in the middle. Okay. Okay. Uh, the question you asked was, how many total printers do I have? Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, all right, so let's go around the room. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. TiVo Tornado, so one. Original CR10 with all the parts and pieces to make it a CR10S, so that's number two. Uh, number three is the Ultimaker 2 Plus. Number four is the GTEC A10, my least favorite of my printers. Um, let's see, back over there behind the giant monitor uh, is the FT5. Okay, so that's a one, two, three, four, that's number five. Uh, number six would be back behind the light there, the purple filament, that's the i3 Mega. Uh, over here is the CR10S behind the paper towel dispenser. Uh, there was a micro Swiss nozzle there, but uh, it uh, <laughs> the nozzle had a uh, some issue, so the whole hot end froze on me. Uh, so that is going to be replaced uh, with a Titan Arrow. So I have seven 3D printers, and uh, this printer right here will make number eight. And pretty much every one of these printers um, is not stock. <laughs> They've all been upgraded. The Ultimaker 2 uh, Plus, let's see, if you were going to buy an Ultimaker 2 Plus today, uh, I think they're $24.99. I got this at Fabricate. Fabricate is the company that is located in Tennessee, 
and they manufacture all the ultimakers that are shipped in North America. It's their remote office, so to speak. They frequently get in um, old Ultimaker 2s and they refurbish them, they put new belts in them, they make sure that everything's working properly, and the general public can buy them cheap. Uh, so that's how I got this one with a factory warranty. And then I spent 400 bucks and I bought the two plus upgrade kit. So uh, I basically, for not a lot of money, I have a $2,500 printer for a whole lot less because I did all the upgrades and I bought, I bought a used one. No, I don't have anything printing at the moment. I The Ultimaker was printing earlier today. That's why I pushed off the start of the video until 8.15 because this thing was chirping away. Uh, the GTEC just finished up a print. The i3, I would like to have it doing some stuff. So I currently have two functional printers, and that's fine. And then the other ones, I have the parts, but I just need to find the time to do them. Uh, the Actually, since we're doing a little... Uh, uh, Takeaway here. So I'll tell you what I'm doing. The TiVo Tornado, uh, a while back I was going to replace the uh, bed screws and the bed shattered on me. That was a good time. So I have a new bed. I have a easy ABL probe for it. Uh, I have a new print surface. What else do I have I got there? I have a new uh, MKS board for it. I have brand new drivers for it. And there's a Titan Aero uh, in there as well too and a new power supply and a new SSR. So that is gonna be a complete gut and redo of the TiVo Tornado. Uh, CR10, that's the one I got. I must have 900 hours on that stock printer and that's what did uh, all of the uh, BB-8 domes you're seeing here in the background. Didn't print the Stormtrooper helmets. <laughs> but uh, I have printed, uh, I don't know if you can see in the background, but there are five BB-8 domes and each one of those took four days. So uh, yeah. So that's got a lot of miles on it. That's going to be overhauled and made into a CR-10S. Uh, let's see, the GTEC we've done a bunch of upgrades on. As I mentioned, the CR-10S over there, the, the hot end clogged on me, so that's down. Uh, that's also going to get a Titan Arrow. I just decided that, you know what, we've had a really good string of luck with the Titan Arrow, so I'm just going to make all my printers Titan Arrows. Uh, all genuine E3D. I'm not playing the clone game. Every time I bought a clone, I'm getting, I got bit in the rear end. Uh, the i3 Mega, we've put a tremendous amount of time in that. It's a really fun printer. The problem with that is that unlike the CR10 and the TiVo Tornado, the motors are up high, and the entire gantry is hanging by these cheap couplers that look like little slinkies because they have little slits in there. And when I had the Easy ABL probe, um, it was off all over the place. The Z offset was never the same. So what's happening is the gantry has a little bit of sway on there because of those couplers. So I recently bought solid couplers and I need to replace those. We need to move the limit switches. We need to calibrate the E-steps and that printer should be set to go. And finally, the FT5, again, it had all those melamine parts. So it was very warpy. There are aluminum replacements for all of those now. So I just need to buckle down and do that process. So yeah, so <laughs> that's the story of what's going on in my print shop. So yes, nothing's printing right now because it was all printing earlier. Hey, this is a nice touch. They, uh... If I could only keep one, probably the Ultimaker 2, even though it doesn't have the print volume of the other ones, uh, the, the other one that I would definitely keep uh, would be the CR-10S. Uh, that's that thing has been outstanding and I'm really disappointed that the uh, micro Swiss hot end failed on that They had mentioned to me in the uh, support email. They said well if your attractions haven't been cranked up higher um, You know, that's why sometimes the filament will get clogged up in the in the uh, in the hot end and in the cool end and, and that's why you had the problem you had and it's like well if I crank up the retractions any higher then that affects the print so so anyway so that is the long answer to the uh, question you posed. Now looking at his instructions, let's see, I have all these M3 nuts and I am wondering what the devil I'm going to do with them. Um, but this already has set screws. Okay, so let's look at the directions together and let's see between me and these wonderfully smart people watching, 
Let's see if you guys can figure it out before me. Okay, so I got the 22 pulley mount the 4K. We did that. Mount a pulley upside down. Okay, so I'm assuming the fat end on top. Mount stepper is using the M3 hardware. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should look at the next page and see if it becomes more obvious there. Because I'm looking... Yeah, because I'm looking here and it looks like they're diagonal, but I mean, this makes sense to me. So the only thing I can figure by this diagonal approach is that we're mounting with two screws from the bottom. Let's zoom, you know what? Let's zoom that in. I, 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 see, the first time I read this, this was my take on it, but let's just double check. So is that the screws coming up in from the bottom here? Hey, Jesse. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the instructions say to bolt in the steppers to this plate, but uh, yeah, let's... Uh, So I'm assuming the M3s are going to go through the grooves here. So we're only securing the stepper motor with two screws. If my readback is correct. But first we got to put the uh, we got to put the pulley on here. And then the next question I wonder is how far make sure you face your stepper plugs in the correct dimensions okay so all the bolts go in the bottom make sure you face your stepper plug okay hang on um, mount the pulley upside down to each stepper flush with the end so essentially, let me uh, come back to my view here. So if I understand correctly, so we want uh, this to be flush with like this up top. I think that's the gist of it. Yeah, I've been adding lock washers and washers all through this. So am I correct in assuming that I've got to make this flush at the top? Is that the gist of what he's saying? Mount the steppers using the M3 hardware. Mount a pulley upside down to each stepper flush with the end. He doesn't end escape. He doesn't end escape. When he says flush with the end, I don't know. <laughs> Again, maybe I'm being maybe I'm being a big dumb animal here, but I'm trying to figure out which end he's talking about. So. And is that the right? Nope. Okay, so. Okay, there's one. Okay, let me, uh... all right, so we have, uh... Go. Not going too crazy tight, but uh, so there it is. Hey, the camera's going to focus. How nice. I'm sorry, someone asked a question and I kind of. 
Ultimaker 3. I, I got to tell you, the Ultimaker 3, I had nothing but good things to say about it. The uh, I hate the price, but uh, they let me have... I've had a special relationship with them for a long time. I've been very active on their forums uh, for years, and uh, when they had the big release for the Ultimaker 3, um, they invited me to New York City. Uh, they, they paid everything, and I got to be there for the grand opening and, and see it up close and personal, and spent a lot of time talking to their chief technology officer and the CIO uh, and the uh, uh, CEO rather and they were just super gracious to me and I mean I'm a guy that's just a I'm building R2D2s you know uh, I was there with people that run you know Shapeways and, and, and stuff like that and Onshape and you name it so it was fun to rub shoulders with all these high-end 3D printing people uh, and here I am just a little R2 builder from the boonies of Maine I thoroughly loved it I had uh, they. I told them. I said, "Look, I got a Comic Con coming up, and uh, I know a lot of people uh, don't understand 3D printers. And would it be possible to have you guys send me, you know, one for display, and I could have it in my booth so I could show it off?" And they said, "Sure, we'll get back to you." So, long story short, they messaged me and they said, "When is your show?" And I said, "Oh, it's not until uh, April." And this was back in in January. And they said, "We'll tell you what. We'll send you these printers now." And I said, "Printers." So they, uh, they sent two Ultimaker 3s and they sent uh, uh, two um, Ultimaker 2 Extendeds and uh, two Ultimaker 2 Pluses. So I had six printers for this show and it was fantastic. And I gotta tell you, I put those things to work. Those things were printing non-stop while they were here. <laughs> All right, now, so what we wanna do is we're trying to line this up. Maybe if I... Yeah, I can see with, with this M3 stuff, you definitely want to have uh, a flat washer. Okay, let's, uh, let's do one at a time here. Let's, uh, let's support the end here. All right. Are these M3 screws going to be long enough? Um, the only uh, complaint I would have uh, about having those here was my power bill was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> uh, it was heaven. Okay, I don't have a flat washer, but I got a, I have a lock washer. Okay. And again, I'm just trying to get... Yeah, the cables are, yeah. Good suggestion, good pro tip. Okay, you. Uh, actually, let's do this guy. Hoping the alignment isn't like a huge thing. Hmm. All right, so I got one in. Oh, doesn't help you when this thing's in the way, does it? Let's put a bunch of lock washers here. Okay, so like the instructions say, when it's coming back at you, you want the these guys pointing inward. Um, as far as how centered it is, I'm assuming that's good. But you know what they say about assuming. <laughs> so this one needs to be pointed in this way. Get you out of the way briefly. So let's uh, move the camera down so you can see what kind of fun I'm having. Okay, so we want you in. There. And again... Uh, Uh, just see, I have some extra 22 either pulleys. I got a whole bunch here too, uh, from all my other kits. So, I mean, if you want, send me a PM on Facebook. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find from all my postings. 
So if you if you don't want them and want to give them a, a new home up here in the boonies of Maine, I won't say no. <laughs> the other thing is, like I said, I, I printed out this, uh, the idler cover that a lot of people have been doing, but I have no idea how that's installed. But we haven't got to that step yet anyway. Oh, you little bastard. You were all lined up. There we go. Um, again, a big recommendation, and maybe uh, Jesse will back me up on this. Uh, flat washers or lock washers will be your friends because putting these small screws against the edges of this ACM may not be the best thing in the world. Okay, so good. These guys are facing each other as they're supposed to. Uh, how long will this take? I don't know. I mean, a lot of the guys got these together in 12 or 15 hours or in an afternoon anyway, depending if they had wives or girlfriends that bothered them. <laughs> uh, let's see. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do maybe, uh, you know, an hour or two every night. Uh, we're coming up on the two hour mark here for this video here shortly. So we're probably going to go to the next step and probably stop for the night. Um, then we'll go to the frame tomorrow because I have to work at 8 o'clock in the morning and I am full of this stuff. 16 hours? Wow. Okay, I'm glad you said it. So this is how you adjust the tension of the belt. Okay, so that's why we're, we're seeing a lot of these slots versus holes uh, for tensioning. Okay. Good, so let me take a peek at the instructions here. Let me share that on the screen. And, all right, let's look. So we've got this, let's see, this, uh, as you can see in my other camera view here. Uh, so we have that looking like that. So that is good. So, yeah, I don't, I don't have a significant other to bother me lately, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking, but uh, yeah, you know how the whole dating thing is. It's scary out there, guys. I keep telling my married friends, you don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> or the friends that are like, oh, I'm thinking about breaking up. No. <laughs> it's Work on it. You don't want to, especially online dating. Ah, the stories I could tell. Okay, and... Uh, People are spooky. Yes, they are. Yeah, and and with the advent of Snapchat, and my, most of the people I see have unicorn horns, or they have all the little graphics on their face, and it's just like, you know, that, that's cute when you're a teenager, but when you're an adult, yeah, it's not your best foot forward. That's just my. That's Paul's lecture on dating for tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, so step three is done. We have done this. We have the make sure you face the stepper plugs. Okay. Yeah, because uh, Mike and Jesse made sure that we did that correctly, too. So, uh, step number four. It's probably as far as we're going to get. What the heck kind of crap show is this? Okay. So, we have an M540. Then an iLock. Uh, what is that in between, though? Okay. This, this idler thing, I... I don't know what to make of that. I'm just looking at the graphic here. All right, Jesse. <laughs> uh, what in the world am I looking at? Is there... What I'm stuck... I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, Figure this out in my head here. Okay, Spe uh, specifically, okay, so I know this is the 40. I know this is the nylock. Now, what goes in between here? So how do you, how do you figure that out? Just by the top? Hang on, let me... Let me unzoom this a little bit. Maybe he's maybe he says it right here. Mount the stepper to BF. Well, at least I know how to mount the stepper. <laughs> Yay! 
Is this the, uh, okay, now is, uh, okay, Z1, let me ask you this. Uh, is this the part where people have been using, uh, let me see if I can pull it up on my uh, screen here, because I keep on seeing this. So is, should we incorporate this into what we're seeing on screen? Because I've seen a lot of people talk about this tensioner. So. This is the FT6 tensioner with a large mounting hole. It's, it's on Thingiverse. Um, Matt replied very aggressively with a yes. So maybe Matt can explain some of that to us. Because uh, I printed one of these on the uh, Ultimaker 2 and uh, it looks like it came out pretty good. Just gonna pop the supports out of here. Crunch, crunch. Wow. So this is why you have that top layer of the support. Okay, see how this came out? Same story with this guy. This is when you add a number one to your top layer of support. And as a result, the inside of this thing is pretty smooth on the inside. So just a little pro tip there for you kids. Okay, see, another one, look at that. The top, so this is the interface piece of the top and on the bottom, and it pops right out. And that is using Simplify 3D, the stuff that people like to complain about, but for 150 bucks, it has made my life so easy. Being an Ultimaker guy, I was a big fan of Cura, but the last couple of versions, quite frankly, are just a total, complete effing disaster. So, The one thing I don't know is how does this mount in? <laughs> yeah, the supports are outstanding. So my question is, is if I go to do this, I'm not seeing in the, well actually, you know what? It turns out I need one more part. It looks like there's a tensioner part right here. Uh, let me put that on screen so you can see it. So it looks like that attaches to something. Hmm. So my question would be, how does this work? Which way does it go in? Because if I only have to do this once, that would be outstanding. Okay, so let me see what uh, Matt is saying. And... What I don't understand is there's a the second piece here that looks like it goes somewhere. Because that's the one thing missing in this document is how, how do these guys go on? Obviously this plugs into something. Oh, I need to print two of these? Does he say in the file? Oh, they fit in the squares. Ah. So what it sounds like is I might be at a good point where I probably want to stop, ask how these go in,
because I'm trying to visualize, or maybe if one of the guys that's put one of these together, uh, together, boy, my English is really gooder tonight, uh, how that mounts on that. And this is M5. Let's make sure this is going to fit. Uh, my M5s are going in kind of tight. Well, it'll, no, I take that back. I mean, it's it'll thread in there. I might have taken an M5 uh, in and out of here. So that's interesting. So they fit in the squares of the big mount. Okay, the mounting holes fit into the existing long holes. Got it. Okay. That's going to be really good to know. I, you know, I'm, I'm really glad you were here so I could ask that question because I think that is going to, well, actually, the, and this is probably a good stopping point two hours in. Uh, so what I want to do then, let me get back over here. Uh, let me move my camera. So I got this, and then I have the two other parts I need to print. Uh, so what I can do is tonight, so I'm replacing those idlers. Okay. Okay. Now, does it effectively just bolt on like this? Okay. So what I want to know is I need to know what goes what. So, yeah, I definitely want to see an exploded view or, or how this is supposed to go in there. Um, yeah, let's do that, Matt. Um, I'll, I'll post the uh, Thingiverse link on a... Uh, post in the Fulgatech group, and uh, if you can chime in, that'll be great. Uh, in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll queue up the Ultimaker to print the two pieces that we need uh, so that it's ready to go for tomorrow night. So there we go. That's not a bad uh, stopping point. Well, cool, guys. So that's what I'm going to do. We're two hours and ten minutes, so not a bad place to stop. Uh, so we have most of the Z done. Uh, we're just going to verify uh, how to get this guy uh, properly installed. We, we got to print two pieces. And uh, a couple people in the uh, Facebook, Facebook group have mentioned that this is a good upgrade to make. So, hey, you know what? This sure beats taking the bottom of a huge printer apart and adding it later. Uh, so that's where we're going to start. Uh, that's where I'm going to stop, rather. So, that said, thanks for watching tonight. This is the Z assembly section of the FT6 build. In the description of this video, there is a coupon code you can use if you're going to be doing any buying on the Fulgortech website, whether or not you're buying an FT6 or not. Uh, that code is there. Uh, there's also links to if you like the video, you like my channel, if you want to subscribe, hit the button. Uh, if you want to throw me a couple bucks for a coffee, beer, down payment on a Lamborghini, that's all there too. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys uh, tune in. We're going to do this again tomorrow night. We'll pick up where we left off. Matt and I are going to find out a couple uh, answers to the questions we have. And uh, with that, till next time, remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Stay nerdy.